the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Um, my name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 479 of the podcast, and I would just like to take this time to say, I don't know where these rumors get started about some sort of crazy new haircut that I got. So uh, I, I just want to put that to rest. As you can plainly tell, clearly tell, I have the exact same hair that I have always had. And I certainly didn't get uh, 40% of my head shaved as a lot of trans people and spider Gwen do. I didn't, you know, go to my wife and say, hey, get the razor. I want a spider Gwen. It, th that's not something that I would do. It's totally, as you can see, my normal hair. Anywho, it's episode 479 of the podcast. How you doing, Bunny? You doing good? I am doing good. I am doing good. Good. Have you died yet? Uh, not yet. Good. Good, good, good. As far as I am aware of. And I just want to come out and say this. I had never... Mama, stop barking at me. I'm doing the podcast, dog. Stop. I just want to take... Stop it, Mama. Stop. You're not getting a spinoff. We already tried one of those. So... So I had not seen the preview for Not of This Earth before now when I was watching the beginning. Just because an alien comes to Earth and kills people and steals their blood, that doesn't make them a fucking vampire. What the hell? No. I'm so confused. Just because... Just because... Creepy Mr. Johnson is taking people's blood. That doesn't that doesn't make him a vampire. I'm so weirded out by that. I'm so weirded out by this. Anyway, uh, welcome to summer, and also welcome to our seventh and final themed summer. It's 2024, the very cheap summer of Roger Corman yes. or RC Cola, as I have gotten to calling him. What do you think we should call it when, you know, because when we did the summer of Fred Willard, we had a, like the Fred willard meter, the Fred yeah. willard -ometer. I don't remember what we called it, but it was like a, we were always looking to see how much Fred Willard is in a movie. Maybe he has a big amount or maybe it's that um one where radio DJ is getting calls from aliens, at, in which point he has two scenes and that's it. So, like, what should we call our Dick Miller watch? Like, Dick Watch? Looking for Dick? Looking for Dick. I kind of like Dick Watch, because it reminds me of the crazy-ass Oklahoma weather people who are, like, uh, who go balls-ass nuts whenever the weather gets a little bit bad. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll workshop some different ones and figure it out. And I'm sorry for what I am about to say. It might upset some people, and I apologize. I'm assuming that this is my inner Ed Wood defender coming out. Because a lot of people still call Ed Wood the worst director of all time. A lot of people still call Plan 9 from Outer Space the worst movie of all time. And it's like, oh, wow, okay. You've obviously never seen Star Crash, but that's beyond the point. That's beside the point. Now that Mr. R.C. Cola, Roger Corman, has passed, everyone in the media, every single solitary person in the media has become a Corman defender. Now, first yeah. of all, Corman Defender sounds like a shitty Avengers mockbuster that Corman would make, probably for the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm sure. I'm sure Steve Gutenberg's available. I don't think his yeah. dance card is that full right now. He could be the uh, 
the uh, Iron Man, but it's a Roger Corman movie, so tinfoil guy. Uh, uh, I'm sure you could get David Norton for cheap, too. Yeah, yeah. And you or know whoever oddly, that... Oddly, he's still a pepper. Huh. Oh, yeah. Man, yeah. wouldn't you like to be a pepper, too? Yeah. Um, I just recently saw on the news, uh, speaking of Dr. Pepper, that Dr. Pepper has surpassed Pepsi as the number two soda in the United States. Good and on I find Dr. that fascinating. Pepper. It was always Coke, Pepsi. Coke, Pepsi. Coke, Pepsi. Now it's Coke, Dr. Pepper, Pepsi. And I find that fascinating. It's probably because throughout the Midwest, everyone just drinks Dr. Pepper like water. It, it's just a fact. More people drink Dr. Pepper than water. Yeah. In the Midwest, in the Bible Belt. But um, number one, Corman Defender on the Sci Fi Channel this fall. Number two, yeah, sure. Okay. Roger Corman wrote and directed and produced hundreds of films. Hundreds upon hundreds, nearly thousands of films Roger Corman had a hand in. Okay, I get that. His over is huge. But here's the thing. How many of them were good? Yeah. I mean, yeah. He made like I I would I would I would say he's probably got like ten good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Depending on how we're going to define good. Yeah. That number could go up to twenty, possibly fifty, but ten good ones. I was pretty bored with our second film, Rock All Night, but I think it would make a wonderful play. Yeah. I think it'd be a good, because most of it just happens in one club. You or, know? Or whatever. I, I, we'll, we'll get there. I enjoyed okay, yeah, it. No, we'll I just don't get it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got you there. And, uh, yeah, sure, okay. The one thing that everyone has to bring up when discussing Roger Corman, okay, he gave his, he gave you know, Francis Ford Coppola, Martin Scorsese, Jimmy Cameron, and all of these famous people their first big break. But you notice how none of them, after they got their first big break, went back and made more movies for RC Cola? Yeah. I yeah. think that says a lot. Yeah, he was he was good at spotting and exploiting talent. Yes, very much so. No, on, um, on, I... on a lot of levels, Roger Corman is a genius, or we would not be speaking about him, or yeah. there would not be hundreds and hundreds of fucking movies with his name on it, you mm-hmm. know, to be able to last in an industry in which you suck for so long is a bit of genius in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. But also, yeah, okay, sure, you gave Martin Scorsese his first big break, but I don't know who directed Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader from 2012. I'm assuming it's not Martin Scorsese. Yeah. I mean, maybe it is. I didn't look it up. So maybe it is, and, and, and I'm just the clueless one. But isn't, it, but isn't it the same thing, okay? If you grind through several hundred movies, 500 movies, 600 movies, how, how, how many movies did he fucking do? You're going to get yeah, a few like, good ones. If you grind you through that many directors, you're going to get some good, a few good directors. If you grind through that many actors, you're going to get a few good actors. I feel that a large portion of society's love of Roger Corman is due to the volume of films that he had a hand in and not necessarily in any way 
the actual quality of the films that he had a hand in. Yeah. And I just find it fascinating that, like, oh, Roger Corman, the king of the independent film genre, who gave their first, you gave Francis Ford Coppola his first big break. But yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Francis Ford Coppola didn't direct. Carnosaur three primal species. Are well, maybe sure? I'm wrong. Are, are you sure? Should we look it up? I think maybe we should. Yeah, Attack of the Giant Leeches and Death Race Four Beyond the Anarchy didn't really sweep the Oscars. No. You know? But here is a fun fact, Bunny. Francis Ford Coppola did secretly direct Shark the Puss 3. Shark the Puss versus Whale Wolf. Now, I mentioned a couple of films here. Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader, Carnosaur 3, Death Race 4, Attack of the Giant Leeches, Shark the Puss versus Whale Wolf. Did I make any of those titles up? I don't think so. But the fact that that's even a question says something about Roger Corman's uh, movie quality. Yes. I think we can say. The fact that you may not be sure, I feel like, just proves this point. But once R.C. Cola died, all the media outlets started tripping over themselves to heap praise on the king of schlock. Here are some quotes and where they are from. The legendary Hollywood mentor, Roger Corman, that's Fox News. His contributions to the world of cinema are unparalleled. Okay, why don't you get a pillow to, or a trapper keeper to cover your your erection there, yeah. slash film? One of the most influential directors of all time, the Hollywood Reporter. Okay, uh, tone it down a few notches Influ there. Okay, no, 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 no. I call total bullshit on that. Influential? Fucking, if you are influential, then... Other people are trying to copy your work. Who is trying to copy Little Shop of yeah. Horrors? Who is out there yeah. stealing laser blasts? Yeah, who in their right mind is copying or him? Star Lost, whatever the fuck that one is. Starcraft. I do like laser blasts. That's the one where the aliens speak an alien language, but it's actually just presidential speeches that they play backwards. Yeah. I like that one. I like laser blasts. That's the kid with like that rocket shooting thing on his arm. I like that. Yeah. That movie's fucking horrible and I love it. Uh one of the most influential directors ever. Yeah. No, Hollywood that's reporter. a lie. That's a dirty lie from the pit of hell. All right, how about what this? Did he this influence? Is from... What movie do you watch by any other director and be like, oh, this movie is a obviously influenced by Roger Corman? Where the fuck do you say that? What did he influence? I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, but everyone's just heaping praise on this man. And it's like, I feel that Roger Corman is just Ed Wood with better breaks. He, and no, a he lot had, he had longer a of a career. Sense, no, he had a great sense of, of keeping his pulse on the culture and knowing what was hot yes. in the culture and rolling schlock slid out as fast as he could to appease yeah. that. That was sheer genius yeah, of so Roger this... Corman to be like, wow, we need to come yeah, out so... with a bunch of LSD movies right now. <laughs> so that's why I was originally going to, to do a, a creature feature, double feature. But I want to try and get all of his different types of movies. So it's like, okay, yeah. not of this earth, like a sci-fi sort of film. And then we need a rock and roll film. Yeah. So I randomly picked Rock All Night only because the platters were on there. And they are a legendary-ass band. I'm kind yeah. of shocked that they were in a Roger Corman film. But, um, oh, one more quote. This is from the USA Today. This one, like, legitimately upsets me. One of the most important figures in the entirety of film history. 
Like Why he's not that? fucking okay, no. Kurosawa. Give me, like, give fuck, me that. Yeah, dude. give me that again. Hit me with that one again. One of the most important figures in the entirety of film history. What the fuck? Oh yeah, you are all up in the in that scrotum with that one. Like fuck USA Today. I need you to slow it down a little bit. Jesus Christ. That's no, like no. saying Okay. That's like saying uh, America's greatest basketball player, Dan Marley. America's greatest baseball player ever, Raleigh Fingers. Like, yeah. okay. Tone it down a little bit. I I am Okay, envision a world, okay? Kind of like that movie yesterday. Envision a world in which Roger Corman did not exist. I don't really think we're missing all that fucking much, okay? I don't think, like, it's the Jarvac heart, you know? I, I, I don't think it's some... He didn't land on the fucking moon. I think if Roger if Roger Corman didn't become a success, the only thing that would be different is that uh, Jack Nicholson would have been arrested like nine times by now. Yeah. Beyond that, I can't really think of anything that anything that would be different. This podcast will, for its final season, because we're ending in October, we won't be heaping praise on Roger Corman here. We will be getting Shakespearean on his ass. Okay. Because, as in, friends, Romans, trans people, lend me your internet browsers. I come to Barry Corman, not to praise him. See, I'm classing up the place now. Yeah. Now, some people I, are. I, I will give him praise where praise is due. But don't give me the horse shit. Yeah, I'll give Roger Corman praise when praise is due. Hey, uh, Chopping Mall is great. You can't tell at all that the entire movie was shot at three in the morning. Yeah. Totally can't tell at all. It's fine. Now, some people out there, some film lovers, may be upset at this film podcast of ostensibly shitting on uh, our man, R.C. Cola, all summer. And to those people, I would like to say the following. Tough titties. Oh, what are you going to do? Cancel our podcast? We already did. <laughs> Sending in October. Yeah. We're burning all the bridges. Yeah. Check and mate. Booby toots. In fact, all of the people who wrote these articles sucking on a dead corpse's butt, they should all be forced to watch Star Crash in its entirety twice. And then, without the internet's help, oh, and, and they can't have any phones, any laptops, any distraction. They are sitting down in a movie theater, forced to watch Star Crash twice in a row. And then after that, without the internet's help at all, they should each write a four-page paper explaining the plot and lore of fucking Star Crash. <laughs> I mean... I doubt Mr. Lobo himself could fucking do that. Yes. In fact, I would round up all of the, the, the journalists myself and do this. Uh, get that uh, get that clockwork orange eye-opening shit. Yeah. And just force them to focus on Star Crash. But I think even watching Star Crash once is cruel and unusual punishment, you know? I fucking hate this movie so much. Yeah? Oh, I don't know. It, it, Carolyn Monroe does her Exactly. Best. Anytime anyone praises Star Crash, they're, what they're really doing is praising the woman in the skimpy outfit. Goddamn right. Roger Corman, he knows what sells. I kind of um, like the robot. I'm pretty sure, though, that Star Crash goes against the 
the Geneva Convention. In fact, Possibly. move over waterboarding. We're just going to show them Star Crash in Guantanamo Bay. You know? Until they ever release the day the clown cried. And we're getting close, dude. We're yeah. getting close. You know what I think they should do? They should release the script for the day the clown cried, and then we just Star Wars uncut it. Mm. We each get 20 seconds to make it. Yeah. To make one scene. Yes. I, I'm all right with that. We all make the day the clown cried. Okay. Um. So... You're in Guantanamo Bay, and here are all these terrorists. I say terrorists, but they're just brown people. All of these brown people in Guantanamo Bay, and instead of getting waterboarded, okay, instead of getting waterboarded, we're trying something different, and then they put on, you know, space hassle, huh? Yes. With, like, the most makeup I have ever seen on a man. Yes. He looks like a freaking, he might as well be a K-pop singer. Uh, after just he, one, he could full... he could he could develop it into a good Bet Midler if he wanted to. He could, he yeah. could, he could. David Hasselhoff in Star Crash is more drag queen than some of the drag queens I know. But after one viewing, all of the brown people in Guantanamo Bay will be begging to go back to the waterboarding. That's how bad this movie is. Now. I didn't plan on spending so much of this episode shitting on a movie that we haven't done yet that I feel that eventually we'll probably have to do this summer. Yeah. And I'm not looking forward to that. There are some movies I'm looking forward to. Can't wait for Fantastic Four. No. Can't wait for Chopping Mall. Then there are ones that I am avoiding. I do not want to do Creature from the Haunted Sea. And... I'm not looking forward to Star Crash, but um, I didn't expect to. Pl I didn't plan on spending the majority of this opening, the Betty White Memorial podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today, aka Jeff, our opening. I didn't expect to spend so much time shitting on what did I write down? The nigh unwatchable 1978 Star Wars from Timu monstrosity known as Star. Crash. Crash. But here we are. In my mind, Star Crash came about when science bred the funniest joke from Monty Python that kills you. Yeah. With the videotape from the ring. Ah. And they science breeded those two things, and then the results <coughs> were a Star Wars ripoff. <coughs> Just mentioning Star Crash anywhere on the planet Earth magically gives Mr. Lobo of Sim Cinema Insomnia a raging hard on. Yeah. So, uh, if Mr. Lobo's watching, uh, you're welcome. Uh, fun fact I smoked weed with that man. Yes. I smoked weed with Mr. Lobo, Mr. Lobo's first wife. And we were smoking in his massive backyard shed, which he turned into a uh, makeshift uh, real DIY filming studio. And so we were smoking weed in the Cinema Insomnia Studios. And so it was really weird to be like, get a, get a, a pipe passed and then to like smoke up and then to look up and there's Mr. Lobo and right behind him on a table is Miss Mittens the house plant. Yes. So I didn't just smoke weed with my wife and Mr. Lobo and the first Mrs. Mr. Lobo. I also smoked with Miss Mitten the house plant and I think that that is a pretty impressive feat. Yes it is. During his very early days in Sacramento, I knew Mr. Lobo personally back then. I had cookouts with him. I borrowed DVDs from him, and I'm pretty sure gave them back. Hell, I saw him, get this, in shorts. Uh-oh. I 
used to work at the bookstore for a small period in time when Miss with Mr. Lobo's wife, Mrs. Mr. Lobo. I actually got him a job there. Um, then Mr. Lobo left her for the Queen of Trash from a local movie festival in downtown Sacramento. And I guess to Mr. Lobo, uh, my wife and I were just friends of his ex because he started ghosting me back then. And FYI, I am talking about Mr. Lobo's personal life for two reasons. Number one, I know or knew Mr. Lobo so well to know that he fucking hates talking about his personal life in public. Okay. And so I, I, it puts a smile on my face to give people a uh, sneak peek at the early days of the show Cinema Insomnia. I know he would hate it. And number two, this podcast is going to be way more open and honest between now and October when we end the episode. Okay. We're burning all the bridges, Bunny. Okay. We're burning all the bridges. In fact, uh, it, it it's like our episode, it's like our podcast now has senioritis. Ten, Ten minutes. Minute, I beat you. Just, just by this one. In fact, I would say more inflammatory things, but I don't want to get in trouble. I have priors. Richard priors. Yes. So, um... So anyway, how you doing, Bonnie? You doing good? You doing all right? Good. Yeah. Good. Keep it good. on. Uh, good. The world is a living hellhole. Uh, other than yes, that, it is. You know. It absolutely is. I had a bunch of shows this weekend. I was going to perform in Lawton's like three day Pride Fest, and then I was going to perform at a drag show, but um, those all had to be canceled because. I Lawton's really far. I had originally agreed to a bunch of different shows and performances last year, back when my friend Becca, uh, married to a woman Becca, not BFF Becca, not girlfriend Becca. So, uh, because she lived nearby and she was going to give me wait, rides wait, 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 see, see, I was fine until you started to try to explain it. Now There's two Beccas. Fuck. So Becca married a woman named Becca? No, Becca married a woman and then the other Becca I know married a guy. Okay. But they're both non-binary. Uh, and uh, Pan, I believe. So, so, uh, but now Becca isn't really going to any of the Pride events, so I don't have a ride. So I had to cancel all of my performances this weekend. And let me tell you, Bunny, I've primarily just been hanging around, annoying my wife and getting high. It's been pretty fucking wonderful. Good. Next Good. weekend, I have two oh, oh, performances. Oh, oh, you have had your run-in with your haters. I yes, that. yes, you've, you've yes. A there's a lot of that. going on. How are you doing? Um, I have bipolar disorder, and I am manic depressive, and um, I'm just finally getting out of a huge depressive episode and starting to feel more manic, so I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, good. You know, because yeah. that means no more depression, and so, yeah, I've just been high most of the time. It's been pretty great. It's been pretty wonderful. My next performance, I have two shows this upcoming Saturday, which I'm not even sure how that's going to go. But, and uh, I will be doing my first official drag number. Yeah. At one of them, and I'm very excited about that. I'm doing a song from the Boston band Jim's Big Ego. Okay. And I'll be performing it at a nightclub on 39th Street in Oklahoma City. I'm very excited. I saw the movie The Fall Guy. Okay. In theaters with Ryan Reynolds and whoever that British chick is who's married to Jim from The Office. Um, I really liked it. I really liked it. Really? I never saw a single episode of the TV show when I was a kid, but I never missed the opening credits. Yeah. Because there's explosions and he's hanging from the 
helicopter and there's stunts being thrown through glass and that shitty ass country theme song that they have. Yeah. I'm the unknown stuff, ma'am. And uh, a country song, I fuck my sister, whatever. Um, and I was like, I don't know the show, so I can't be disappointed if they're not faithful to the TV show. Because the only thing that I know about the TV show is it had a country music theme song and it had, uh, what's his name? Lee Majors? Was that? Yeah. He was yeah. the fall guy, yeah? Okay. Well, once the end credits start playing, they play a modern Blake Shelton cover of the cheesy ass shitty country theme song. And that made me happy. Like, oh, there's the shitty country theme song. And then there's a mid credit sequence that features Lee fucking Marvin. Lee Marvin? That made me happy. That made me real happy. Lee Marvin is in the Fall Guy. Lee Marvin or Lee Majors? Lee, whichever one was on the TV show. <laughs> whichever one starred on the TV show. Lee Majors. He's in it. it was a Lee. It was a Lee. Might have been General <laughs> Lee. Might have been the car from Dukes of Hazard. For well, all if I it know. was just Lee, that would mean it was Liberace, and now we had got a whole other movie. Got that right. I thought of you during the Fall Guy because um, Winston Duke, the dad from Us, and the leader of the Mountain Tribe from Black Panther, he's in it as another stuntman, and whenever he talks to, uh, what's his name, Ryan Reynolds, no, not it's not Ryan Reynolds. It's Ryan uh, Gosling. Ken. Ryan Gosling. I, it was a Ryan. So it, when they talk, Ryan Gosling and uh, the dad from Us, they speak in movie quotes. Yeah. And so the big dude says a movie quote, and then Ryan Gosling has to guess it. And he doesn't want to do stunts anymore because he was injured. And Winston Duke just leans up to him and says, hey, it's not how many times you, you get hit. It's not about how many times you fall. And I'm like, is this a fucking Rocky quote? <laughs> and he says, it's about how many times you get back up. And Ryan Gosling goes, don't you quote Rocky at me? And, and it, it brought a real smile to my face. Yeah. And I'm like, yay, we did that last summer. Woo. So anyway, uh, that's all I've got for the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Red Shadow Legends. Download today, a.k.a. Jeff, which is probably right up here. Yes. Right up there. As you do. Oh, look at it. Do you see it? Yep. There it goes. It's raining Bettys. It's raining white. Hallelujah, it's raining white, white dead women. So we are going to take a short break. Uh, we're going to be playing some videos and some fun stuff yes. for you. Uh, you might see me with a mustache, it, but it's not me. It's a totally different person. I don't even know that person. And when we come back, we are going to be talking about our two movies, both from 1957, not of this earth and rock all night and let me tell you uh dig this daddy -o. these movies swing yes dig this dig this turkey we're gonna head in our jalopies and hot rod it over to the malt shop yes but before we do that maybe we should take a break should we take a break we should take a break. I concur. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Film. Ooh, I just glitched. Can you still hear me, Bunny? I can still hear you. You killed your camera. Okay, bro. that's... Okay. Uh, camera? Hello? Okay. We will be right back <laughs> with more of the Pope on Film after this. Do 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 do. That's the outro music. Do 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 do. And I'm gonna try and fix this camera. You can probably cut it. All right. Break. Okay. 